and welcome back to the movies made us do it me and matt are back how are you matt i'm pretty good so how are you i'm well very well uh, i very much enjoyed watching and talking about star trek 3 the search for spock last week um this week we're back to watching trash <laughs> <laughs> actually i saw something great yeah. this week I, I lie i saw a good one this week well, that's good. Yeah, happens every now and again. Uh, do you want to kick us off? Should we Should we start with the one we've both seen then? Okay, sure. Let's we'll uh, start with Trigger Warning then. Trigger Warning, the 2024 action thriller starring Jessica Alba. Um, directed by Muli Sura. Sura? Never heard of them. Um, this stars Jessica Alba. She yep. is a skilled special forces ex CIA Steven Seagal <laughs> woman. Um, yeah. yep. uh, and uh she's she's on a mission and she's she's doing the murders and then um she gets a phone call that her father has passed away, so she has to give up the life of murders and uh take over the pub mining operation whatever's going on i forget already it's, it's already it's, leaving my brain it's, it's a pub but also that's, a mine that's an old mining that's right her father died in a yeah. horrible mining accident it did not involve grenades and <laughs> um and while in the car uh it, during during the you know she returns home and on the uh, in, in the car you hear um you know, and endorse me for senator. We will make America great again. And I was like, I've, I've got a bad feeling about this senator, dude. I know this is going to be good. Okay, one thing I did find out that was definitely one of those sort of, oh, okay, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah. So the person, one, the, one of the people who wrote this also wrote the second Last of Us game. Oh, okay, right. I didn't so that, play that, but I've heard about it. Tells you something. I have it. heard about it. Yeah. This movie for me mm -hmm. was top tier canon movies trash. <laughs> yeah. And and I've got to say this film is awful but mm -hmm. I kind of enjoyed it as just a trash action movie, you know? There were certainly bits of it. Yeah. Uh, well, like it, I mean the, the 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 plot is like the plot of every yeah, action movie ever. Ex-military comes home trouble at home domestic terrorism mm -hmm. john rambo um you know john wick uh, whatever pick your poison uh movie mm -hmm. um but i used to watch this kind of trash all the time as a kid you know and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And i mean it this, kind of this, took me back there this is definitely teenage boy fodder oh yes this is like blow stuff up watch a hot woman yeah, up, she, she is she is more pleasant to watch than chuck norris i'll give them that. i mean uh yes she is definitely easier on the eye than chuck no. norris or certainly Unless, steven course, seagal you know you're, you're that you know you're that, you're that way inclined but yeah the, one of the weirdest things for me was with a few tweaks this probably could have been all right like better yeah like, i mean the the the, the 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 move the, the the plot is is paper thin oh yeah 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 but you don't really need it to be any more complicated. No, no, of course not. Yeah, and we've we've often talked about overcomplicating action movies yeah. that should just be. And this is fine. It reminded me a lot of um, was it Homeland? What was the the Jason Statham movie? Oh, yeah, I think it was, was it? Home yes, Home Something. Right. When Jason Statham goes home or whatever, or he's yeah, like a, a he's living in and... yeah rednecks. Yeah, yeah. This kind of reminded me of that in Even a way. His daughter, isn't it? That's that... right. That's the one. This, um, the, the thing is, is which is just, just with a few tweaks, yeah, it made the story better. There's one. There's a bit slight spoiler when it all goes to shit near the end, mm -hmm. and the town folks turn up, sort of roadhouse style. Yeah, I, I thought it was going to be a roadhouse ending, and I thought, oh, cool, they're going to sort of they're, they're, yeah. You know, they turn up, I thought the and same. Then just, and then she just basically tells them to fuck off, and they do. And She's they like, do fuck anything. off and give me like, guns. Yeah. You're like what the fuck? It's like, why didn't you use them? I know. I I thought we were gonna get a real fun roadhouse ending as well. I I was briefly yeah. excited by that. I was like, oh, I like. I could go with a a, a rip off roadhouse ending right now. Um, I, I, 
I've got, I got, I, I do love that my Michael Anthony Hall has become this sort of, he's played the sort of racist sort of senator type character a number of times now, or just, just a genuinely horrible person. He, he does, he does it so well. It, it, it just, it, it kind of just makes me smile that well, from breakfast we, club to <laughs> exactly so from, <laughs> <laughs> the idea of him this little dweeby nerdy kid from like weird yeah science. breakfast club and weird science yeah. and, like, <laughs> and then he and then there's sort of that period in when he became the sort of you know he was at the dead zone and stuff where he was yeah yeah like yeah. he put on a bit of muscle and he was in like slightly serious things and now he's gone full villain it's <laughs> it's, it's like Hey, that's a pretty good career arc, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually thought he was fine in this, you know, as it's... as stereotypical bad exactly, politician. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm a senator who wants to build the wall. Yeah, like, yeah, that, basically, that's basically, basically what... yeah, yeah. It was effectively that. Yeah. Um, the the only thing that was with this with the two sons and him. Yeah. The only thing that was interesting was the fact that she had the relationship with the older brother yes and he was you know the sheriff and they had this sort of you know maybe he's a good guy and maybe he you know but they they didn't use it well enough no it it could have been something much more interesting if they'd have worked it yeah i I agree like better yeah um i i will say for the most part i i thought jessica alba did did fine in the action scenes yeah, um, you know, she looked a... like she could take care of herself. It wasn't, you know. Well, she's she's done a lot of action before, yeah. so yeah, yeah, she'd be pretty sort of competent. There was a couple of times where, in the fight scenes, where people were like waiting to be here. There, there were the 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 most egregious moments for me were 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 moments where she'd attack someone, mm-hmm. and they, and it would be like stealth, right? So she stealthed her way into the cave, and and. Yeah. Man has found her. Other yeah. two men have just left the room and she's like stealthing and then he sees her and then she she attacks him but she kind of punches him and then there's there's all these awkward pauses where it's like <laughs> dude just shout out and your yeah. friends will come in and murder her. Yeah. Like but they don't and they just no. kind of have the fight. And it's very Chuck Norrisy in that way, but like it it is like mm, maybe just shout you know, there, there was there was some really weird awkward pauses in the in the fight scene. The 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 one that got me was she. So she's into blades. She loves her knife and she likes she yeah. likes using knives and stuff. And I was like, wow, I, I love a love a girl who plays with knives. <laughs> sure, does it for me. That's why I've always liked Angelina Jolie. Okay. Um, and the problem is, is she never looks a hundred percent comfortable walking around with like there's a bit with a machete she looks actually very comfortable with a gun yes but not a knife she seems fine but the yeah. knives she she's there, there are some sort of <laughs> scenes where she, it almost looks like she's holding the knife at fingertips length like you know she's yeah. like a bit away from her uh-huh. and there's a bit where she gets this machete at one point and i think it was supposed to be a sort of cool oh she can really handle herself with this weapon, but she just sort of swings it around a bit, and the camera sort of like gets in close, and she's like, and then she sort of poses, and, and you're she's like, like, I like it. Was, was that it? Yeah. Whereas sort of, you know, like not, again, not it's again, season. it's very Steven Seagal. Give Steven Seagal <laughs> a knife, and then the camera just shakes all over the place, and he just kind of sw- switches it around a bit, and it's like, oh, yeah, knife fight. Look, look what I did. Yeah, I'm look, really I can knife fight. Um, I I had fun though. Honestly, I'm not going to say this film's good because it's, it's oh, no. obviously it's not. But this is the kind of stuff, like you said, it's teenage boy trash. Yeah, I, I, I would have lapped this up in in the uh, early '90s. I would have been like, "Yeah, this is great. It's fine." Yeah, it was. There was, you know, <clears throat> even even with the sort of some of the, the sort of slightly dodgy fighting, there was there were some scenes that were, were okay. They were fine. They were, you know, they, they were serviceable action scenes. Yes, it serviceable action scenes. I would say is is, is fair. And there was there was just a sort of couple of characters that they sort of introduced, and you thought, "Is this person going to get to do anything?" No, the answer uh, is no. The, you know, there, there was a sort of like nice little setup with the, the friend and her and his mom, and yeah, I mean, you, you it, do have that brief moment. 
yeah, there was a bit where she puts it together and, and, and stuff, and it was like, okay, is it... Like again, said, again, it, it's like, I get a minor spoilers if you can spoil a movie like this. Again, it was so beat for beat canon yeah. action movie. I was like, so we're going to get to the part where she gets captured and tortured and then escapes. And then the, 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 the town folk will take her in and hide her somewhere while she recovers. Yeah. And then she'll come. And it was like, yes, this is it. And then she was handcuffed to get beat up. I was like, here it is. Here's the here's the bit where Chuck Norris has been caught and he's getting beat up by the bad guy. And then he's going to get out. And it was like, yeah, okay, cool. I mean, beat for beat. They, they severely beat her. Yeah, she I mean, was she was hurt for a good five minutes, Matt. We're, we're, <laughs> she was limping around for a bit. We're talking, she, you know, we're talking almost later John Wick movies level of yeah, yeah. She she gets damage, messed up, yeah. That she just sort of goes, you know, oh, I've, I've been shot and I've been beaten up and I've been cut and stuff, but it's fine. I just walked it off. No, she specifically says to that guy's mother, "Have you got any of those great pain pills?" Oh yes, that's right. I'm, I'm sorry. I've <laughs> and, then, that. and then it's fine. Great pain feels, but course. to be honest, again, this is the kind of stuff that would oh, it's, happen. It's perfectly in, those in line with canon movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like I couldn't help but notice how aligned this film was to canon for me. Um, yeah, yeah it's I mean, it's trash, but I enjoy. I, enjoy I think that's it. the thing you say. You say that, and it sort of warm. It does warm your heart for those. <laughs> canon yeah, yeah. It, I mean, yeah. I, I think people can get an enjoyment out of this. It's it's enjoyable enough. It's you know. It's, it's so not- she, terrible she looks good yeah she looks good kicking ass and she does you know even if the usual thing of tiny lady oh i thought i thought she did a reasonable job though it it wasn't like she was throwing people around she was using her weight to her Mm -hmm. advantage and and she was you know doing a lot more of the kind of fast spinny stuff she does get damaged but like i said she just walks off so (laughs) it's sort of a bit you go oh wow she's really getting like her and then it's like oh but she's just walking it off okay fine it's like yeah, yeah, and you know, most of the people in it were doing their jobs fine. Yeah, you know, the the guy playing Elvis was suitably a douchebag that you know you wanted her to hurt him badly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the <laughs> some, some like the the whole smuggling weapons out of the ba- the base and stuff is like wow, those that those people in that base are either really dumb or. You or know, on just the... don't give a fuck. Or someone's getting paid off, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I know that things like that have happened in the past. So, in you know, real life things, you know, weapons go missing and stuff. But it did seem slightly implausible in this. Yeah, <laughs> and I mean, I know I know it's, it's America. Yeah. So I guess that happens. But, like, she didn't seem all that surprised when when Elvis and his mates are just fucking around with a rocket launcher. <laughs> She's yeah. just like, oh, they've got their hands on a rocket launcher. I'm like, is that normal in America? Maybe it is. Yeah. Her response was, I wonder where they got that from. I wonder where and... they got that RPG from. Yeah. <laughs> I, there was that weird bit as well when she sleeps with the... Again, spoilers. She sleeps with the, with the, with the sheriff. Yeah. And then she, she steals his card so she can go to the police station yeah but she decides to be a mex there yeah like this place is in the middle of fucking nowhere yeah and yet she, i just i just bike there it's fine it's like why <laughs> why not i mean I, I understand if she wanted to be quiet but surely you just push the car down the road and I mean, yeah she, go down the road i don't know but it, yeah, it was. It was that one. I thought that was weird as well. I was like, oh, so Jessica was just finding a bike now. Weird, mm-hmm. but sure. But why not? I mean, it was. Yeah, it was. It was pretty terrible. It's pretty terrible. I mean, the yeah. Dialogue was atrocious. Oh god, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and the, and the whole plot was just like, oh, what is this? Yeah, I've seen and, this film a million times. Yeah, and you know, like like I said. Even though the dialogue is terrible, the things are, everybody's doing what they're supposed to do. So it's yeah. not, you know, the acting. The acting's not horrible. No, I I thought Jessica Alba was fine in, in yeah, most she of was, the scenes. She was pretty good. She was, you know, the supporting cast are fine. Like you said, the guy playing Elvis suitably fine as complete asshole character. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's got an eighteen percent on Rotten Tomatoes. 
I Oof. agree. That's about right. You know, it's, it's, it's sub 20% trash, but it's enjoyable sub 20% trash, you know? Oh, I, I guess I would give it, I mean... Slightly I higher? Give, yeah. Give it, but I would give it slightly higher than that. It's not... I mean, it's, it's not Steven Seagal bad. Metacritic has it as generally unfavorable. <laughs> yeah. You're fine. I enjoyed I mean, it. I, it is terrible. It's like objectively and I, and I mean, terrible. Later Steven Seagal movies, not early Steven Seagal movies. I like Hard to Kill and... Yeah. You know, they're terrible, but... They're terrible, but fun. Yeah. I, get, I, I suppose I put it that level. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Early Steven Seagal movies. Yeah. When he was... But he was still relatively fit. Yes. And, yeah. And, you know, looked like he could actually do stuff. Yeah. When he when he looked capable. Yeah. When we, when his lies were somewhat believable. Yeah, yeah. When we still believed him when he said he was the <laughs> highest ranking Aikido master. Yeah, actually. yeah. Because the internet didn't exist. And we were like, okay. Yeah. I guess so. <laughs> Fine. Same with all those dudes, we believed. We believed all their uh, like Van Damme's like, oh, I'm the best at this, 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 this. It's like, sure you were. It. I yeah. won the Kumite. Sure you did. I did see uh, an interview with Michael J. White where he was like, well, you know, I did fight Van Damme. Like he would spar with me during Universal Soldier, and he said like, you know, he's an actor, but he was like, fair play to him. He he would, you know, he would go for it. You know, he wasn't. You know, he wasn't afraid to get hit and he wasn't afraid to kind of spar properly. Yeah. Um, but none of those actors, they're no, actors. They're not... Van Damme was, was actually a pretty competent martial artist. He was. He, yeah, he, yeah, yeah. But I, again, it's, it is mostly with, with for Van the Damme, it was just, I think it was exaggerated as opposed of to... Of course. Out and out bullshit. Like yeah, some of... <laughs> Seagal, I just... Oof. And Seagal, I think also the difference between a lot of those as well is that, is that Seagal's a bully. Yeah, There's he's lots a... of actors that have said he just hurts them. He's an absolute piece bit. of shit. Yeah. Seagal is awful. It's like, I'm really good at this, and I'm going to hurt you to prove that I'm really good at this. It's like, no, you don't need to do that, dude. No, you you, you picked, you you became an expert in a rubbish martial art. That is fine. <laughs> but, but that's, you know, or not a rubbish martial art, a, 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 an obsolete martial art. You, you know, you bet on the wrong horse, and it's fine. But, yeah, I, I've heard nothing but bad things about the way he treats people. Uh, sounds like an awful person. But, um, but anyway uh trigger warning uh, is awful but um if you're in the mood for some real trashy action it's it's fine yeah that's exactly its you know? purpose it's didn't it's, make it's, me angry i i quite enjoyed my time with it no. i wouldn't ever watch it again but it was like yeah that was fine Absolutely. you know no it's exactly that it's it's in, if you if you want to switch your brain off yes watch the explosions watch jessica alba run around in a pretty cool leather jacket hmm with some knives yeah yeah it, that's, it's it's your, it's fine for that yeah absolutely well what else have you watched matt so i also watched family affair a family affair so this is uh nicole kidman and um uh, zach efron and joey king yeah this is another netflix uh, job. <clears throat> so Zach Efron is um, Chris Cole, and he is a sort of, uh, I guess, um, well, I was going to say, no, well, no, he's not really. Okay, so he's he's a he's the top actor of playing the same role, action movie star type. Oh, guy. okay, yeah, yeah. Um, and we were just talking about some of them. Yes. Um, and Joey King is his assistant and Nicole Kidman is her mother. And, um, Joey King was, uh, character Zoe, uh, Zara. She was promised that if she worked with Chris, this Chris Cole guy, that she would eventually become a producer and she would, you know, learn from him right. and she would, you know, she would get a, a proper foot in in the industry. Yeah. However, um, he's this terrible man-child um, asshole. We were talking who, about one of them just now as well. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Yeah, who doesn't really know how to look after himself, doesn't really know how to do anything. This, this segued great. <laughs> yeah, it did. It did. Um, and 
you know, when we first see her, see him, he's at a restaurant with his latest girlfriend, yeah. and uh, Zara's stuck in traffic, and she's trying to get to him, um, and she's got this box of uh, diamond earrings, and he is talking to this 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 woman, and he's stringing out all these things, and he makes it sound like, you know, he says. You know, I think it's time we take our relationship to the next step. And of course, she's thinking, "Oh my God, he's 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 going to propose or something, or he's he's going to you know he's going to want to do something, or, or you know maybe move in or something like that." And of course, when she eventually gets there and she throws him the box, you know, they they have this sort of like, "Look at that over there!" And she throws the box. He he gives her this rings and he says, yeah, "This these earrings." He says, "I think we should finish. We're, we're broken up." And these are the ring the sorry the earrings he gives to these girls. When he's had enough, right? So whenever anything it gets too serious, off they go. <clears throat> so you get this brief sort of thing where you discover that he hasn't been in a supermarket. He he basically came to L.A. when he was like fifteen or something stupid like that, and he's been an actor ever since. And he's so he's he has, I think he says I haven't actually been to a supermarket in a decade. So he's, he, you get these sort of little sort of suspicions that he kind of wants to be a little bit more, and he wants to be a little bit more normal, but he's too much of a dick to do it. Right. Um, so there's a big argument. Uh, he, she, is trying to help him out, but she ends up being late for this meeting. So he locks her out. She says she's had enough. She climbs over the fence and she has a go at him and says, "That's it, I quit." So meanwhile. Back at her home, she lives. Still lives. She lives with her mum, Nicole Kidman, who's uh, Brooke. She has. She was a writer, and she hasn't written for a while. Um, and her husband, her her daughter's uh, dad, mm -hmm. um, he died a number of years ago. So he was like the love of her life, but she, but he died, and it, you know you sort of get that that sort of in, in, in impression that it was a lovely relationship and all that sort of stuff. And, uh, you know, they're both, they both were devastated by this thing, and Kathy Bates plays his mother, who they you know they still or they still see and they still have yeah. a really good relationship. <laughs> and the next day, Chris comes into the house to look for Zara to basically sort of apologise and, and get her, take her back, sort of thing, because like, obviously she didn't want to leave him, obviously. So you know it's that, but. She's not there, and he bumps into Nicole Kidman, who's cleaning the house in a in a uh, blondie t-shirt and, and and looking relatively sexy. And mm -hmm. uh, you see where it goes from here. From there, they basically end up in bed. Zara comes home. She's devastated with you know the funniest thing. That's actually in the trailer. Funniest moment of the whole movie where she freaks out and then walks into the door frame and knocks herself out. Right. That was hilarious. Um, and then it's a sort of, you know, she's worried about her mum because she knows what he's like. She doesn't want her mum to be, to, to be hurt. But also, she doesn't really want her mum to be anything other than her mother. So, she, you know, she's also, there's a, there's a whole thing about her not really growing up either. Right. So there's this sort of weird sort of, you know, they, they say they're not going to see each other, but they start seeing each other in secret and you know all these things sort of come out and again like the last movie it was okay there was some terrible dialogue um there are some weird sort of scenes where they're sort of having conversations but the the conversations just don't feel like real people having a conversation right it felt very sort of well staged just sort of weird people going through the motions of conversations that don't just feel normal at all. Mm. <clears throat> and the weird thing is, is these are all really good actors. I mean, even, even Zac Efron, who, you know, I know gets a lot of shit because of he was one of those, you know, teen actor type, you know. He's come a long way. Yeah, I think he has. And, and I've, I've seen him in a few movies that I've thought, he's, you know, he's, he's really good. He knows how to hold off. There's just something lacking in this. That this Nicole Kidman, who's usually fantastic, she seems to be 
walking through it, it's it. I don't know whether it, they just didn't feel the role or what, but it it feels like they never quite got into their roles. Yeah. Kathy Bates is fine. Is you know she's doing her best. I'm the old lady who you know is wise and looks after everybody type role. And Joey King's great as the slightly arrogant, you know, why isn't this going right for me? Sort of girl that hasn't quite grown up yet. Right. Um, again, it's like the last one. It's just like you, you could you could see with just a few tweaks, it might have been a better movie. Yeah. This whole Christmas thing is like, well, why isn't this movie coming out at Christmas? I mean, it's yeah, not like really Christmassy, but there's a whole. Th- I mean, they go for they have Christmas together and stuff. And you're like, why isn't this? It is just- strange, isn't it? It's the same with Halloween, though. You know. Yeah. Well, I say with fucking most Halloween movies. Most uh, most, sorry, most horror, horror yeah. movies these days. It's like, why are you, why are you putting this after Halloween or before Halloween? What, what, it is what? a strange choice, but. Um. I, it it sort of kept me relatively entertained because yeah. of who they are they are but there's there's just some weird sort of stuff that just doesn't grab you enough it feels like it's half done it, it felt like they they almost feels like they could be bothered right in, in some places and, it, and it's there's a bit in the middle that sort of drags a little and you're like okay can we just get on with this now it's a, it's beginning to be a bit too long and it's, you know, there's 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 some really nice scenes. There's a there's a there's a nice scene with Zara. She um, her best friend uh, Eugene, played by uh, Izakoshi, who clearly they have a really great relationship, and and she sort of looks after her a lot. And when they she has an argument with her mum, she goes to stay with her. And there's a nice thing that you can slight spoilers. You can see that there's something going on with her and her boyfriend. She's she's sort of dropped hints in the conversations that, you know, something's not quite right with them. And then later on, you discover when she's being really, really selfish and she goes to sort of to whinge to her friend and her friend's like packing stuff up. And she's like, in case you haven't noticed, we've broken up. He's not here. You know, but you didn't fucking know any of that. You didn't notice any of that. You didn't once ask me how I was and that was really good there was mm. some really nice sort of stuff with that and they could have worked on that a little better <coughs> and it could have been slightly more impactful yeah but it just, it's just sort of it it's like it, it it just gets to a sort of point and then it falls back down again hmm. and it's oh. I can't really recommend this one honestly it, it just felt a little flat and a little to me and again like with the the last movie they're all sort of story beats that you've seen before and other things done better in those movies you know that the sort of you know put upon mother and the not quite grown up kid and the, the you know the new younger man i haven't seen there's there's actually one on amazon at the moment with um anna hathaway where she's um she starts dating a, a boy band guy and i haven't seen that one but apparently that one's done, from what I can gather, that one's done a little, handles the relationship a little better. Yeah. Uh, this just felt meh. Hmm. Uh, you know, and the, Nicole Kidman and Zac Efron have been, were in the Paperboy together before, and they had more, they seem to have more chemistry then than they do now. And I don't know whether it's just this movie, or just them, or what, but, and there was a weird thing with, I, I hadn't seen Zac Efron for a while, and Nicole Kidman, you know, she we, we we know she's had a lot of work done, and she doesn't look quite like she used to. And no. sometimes when she smiles, it looks a little odd. But Zac Efron is he's changed too. His head. Yeah, is well, he had a he had some like hideous thing happen to him though, didn't he? Yeah, he I had to have corrective know, surgery. This he, yeah, uh, he smashed his chin on. Yeah, allegedly he completely destroyed his jaw. Right? Yeah. Yeah, and had a lot of surgery to, re- mm-hmm. to repair it, and he says the the. The physio afterwards, yeah, make the muscles in his chin more prominent. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's true. Whether it just, I, I have or... no idea, but it sounded but pretty it horrific. Does, for me, it was he was the more jarring to look at than mm. Nicole Kidman was. 
Well, I, I, I will say I, I thought Zac Efron uh, probably gave one of the best performances I've seen this year in The Iron Claw. Um, I still haven't so. seen that yet. But I, what I really do want to see that. Yeah, I yeah, think he was superb I, in like that. Like I said, and, and you, you know, like you said, he's a, he is actually a good actor. He's great in that, you said. Yeah. So you know, I know he can act. Mm-hmm. But this one, he just felt like he, they all feel like they're walking through it, in it. Yeah. It just feels so so lackluster and a bit. Yeah, that's a shame. Like, involved really wanted to be there almost. Mm. So yeah, I can't recommend this one. It's, it's not a great movie at all. Oh well. Well, that was a family affair. Um, a film that I can definitely recommend, and that clearly everyone involved wanted to <laughs> just go mental in and and give their all, was Furiosa, a Mad Max sound. Oh, nice uh 2024 george miller directing um and uh you know i i think i don't know whether it's bullshit or whether it's true but george miller has said you know hey we spent 15 years writing fury road and we wrote the backstory to every character so we know what everyone does in their whole history and, and he does Furiosa. like his details no, he does, in, in, he does. in, so in fairness to him he does he does have history of doing stuff like this so it is believable yeah. um but, but he also is one of those like well it's myth so we don't need to bother about that yes yeah yeah so it's you know yeah um so obviously fury road we both saw loved that movie yeah. uh saw it in the cinema tremendous action movie superbly directed um this is a prequel to that film um so it it takes place kind of 15 20 years before i guess uh again though you know uh, as you've said you know miller has said it's all myth it doesn't really timeline doesn't really matter yeah um timing is very nebulous in this uh yeah yeah but here we obviously we we start with with furiosa being a child um we see her in the in the green place of many mothers um which we saw in fury road um and uh she she goes to like a this you know she's in in this forbidden area picking peaches um and they come across some raiders furiosa tries to sabotage their their bikes but they capture her um and and she's taken ultimately to dementis uh played by chris hemsworth uh who is the, the the leader of this biker gang um uh, furiosa's mother you know tries to tries to stop uh tries to save her uh but is ultimately um killed um yeah. and uh ultimately furiosa is um is is taken uh and and we then kind of see this this whole story to take place uh this this movie I guess stars Anya Taylor Joy. Um, it it does towards the end of the movie. Much of the film stars a younger girl playing a younger Furiosa. Um, they did a really cool thing with the CGI where they made this girl look more and more like Anya Taylor Joy. So it, there's a weird crossover point where you're like, is that Anya Taylor Joy, or is that a girl they've made to look like Anya Taylor Joy? Okay, it, it's strange. So so the girl. They they apparently CGI'd this little this girl, so that she becomes she looks more and more like Anya Taylor Joy as she grows up. I'm, I'm guessing it's the eyes that they change mostly. Yeah, the nose and you know, she's she's got a very distinctive face, Anya Taylor Joy. So they, they yeah. kind of you know. I, and I know that right. I've heard people talk about her, and that some people really are put off by Anya Taylor Joy. I don't. I personally, I think she's gorgeous, but. Some I think she's a, she's she's very beautiful. I I yeah. Some people find her weird and and almost disturbing, which which kind of makes me laugh. And I, it I, just I, goes I, to show all all beauty is you know eye of beholder, isn't it? It's all yeah. I I think it's I I don't know. I I think it's it's refreshing when someone isn't the cookie cutter. Yes. Look that Hollywood she tends to churn out, you know, um, yeah. particularly in this age of of you know well. I guess it's been an age of plastic surgery for a long time, but but it certainly seems over abundant at this point where we've got actresses in their thirties and forties looking like they're share. Um, you know, it it's it's nice, you know, I I I I think it's it's nice to have more uh, unconventional. Is that is that that yeah, sounds that sounds, I, I, that I sounds rude and negative, but that's not how I it mean does it. Sound, um, but I think I think even well, 
I know she says herself that she she was uh, she thought she was ugly when she was a kid, right. and people treated her that way. So she, I think, she was bullied quite severely when she was well, a kid. Well, regardless, books. she's a tremendous actress. I actually oh. think she might be one of the 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 best of the current crop of actors we've got. Um, you know, every time I see she, her in anything, I'm certainly like, one of my favorite actors. These, yeah, I mean, days. anything she's in, I will end up watching because I think she's one of those. You know, even if the, the film's going to be terrible, she'll be great. She'll put in a great performance. Yeah. Um. So they do this CGI thing, um, where she becomes Anya Taylor Joy eventually, and then Anya Taylor Joy obviously takes over, uh, in the role of Furiosa, uh, instead of Charlie Theron. Um, and now obviously they don't look anything alike, Charlie Theron <laughs> and, and and Anya Taylor Joy. However, I will say Anya Taylor Joy and uh Ben actually pointed this out as well that she does a very good job vocally of kind of capturing. Oh, okay. Charlize Theron's performance and she acts like she she does act like Furiosa you know she's not like oh I'm doing my own thing it it does very much feel like she is playing the same character um and uh so ultimately yes captured by Dementus um we end up meeting Immortan Joe a younger Immortan Joe um and uh obviously they they at first they so the person the people that kidnapped uh furiosa from the green place know where the green place is and they're going back to uh to dementis to tell him where the green place is and she's like their proof she's like look we got this girl she's she's not mutated in any way she's perfect child and she came from this place and this is the proof and we know where it is um they all get killed off apart from one guy who basically gets killed out of jealousy because they're they're all trying to please dementus um so ultimately he gets his tongue ripped out he can't speak oh no sorry they slash his throat he ends up dying so they don't know where it is she's got a map on her arm um but obviously they without knowing where to start they don't know how to read the map kind of thing um so they initially are searching for the green place but furiosa won't tell them uh, they come across a war boy who thinks he's in Valhalla because he's been shot in the head, but he's still alive. <laughs> so he thinks cool. he's dead. He's like, am I in Valhalla? Um, and uh, basically he tells Dementus uh, about the Citadel. And of course he says the Citadel has loads of water, is abundant, is a place of abundance, which is exactly what Dementus is looking for in the green place. So I think he mistakes the citadel for the green place and ends up sending the biker horde there where we obviously meet a morton joe uh and his war boys um and uh you know i i won't spoil too much from that point on but obviously he quickly realizes that that morton joe is not to be fucked with basically um and and what we get here is is a a battle between dementus and immortan joe immortan joe initially has all of the power he has uh the citadel he has the um uh what is it the 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 bullet farm bullet farm and the uh, gas town gas town yeah so he he controls all of those and then dementus basically starts trying to take over those other places and we end up with this war and furiosa's caught in the middle she ends up uh ultimately being uh taken by immortan joe uh as part of a deal uh is a deal to to uh, effectively dementus takes gas town so she's kind of traded as part of the deal um although dementus is is quite unhappy about the deal he kind of agrees to it so the the, the film goes on from there um it goes without saying that george miller is a tremendous director and and again here although there's a lot more cg in this and it's it's clear there's a lot more cg than it, than in say, that's, Road. that's the one thing that's been worrying me the most how much the cg the, the direction is still stunning mm. you know it's not easy to film a desert and give desert scale and motion and all of those things that that george miller seems to do so effortlessly mm-hmm. you know um the performances are superb. Uh, Annie Taylor Joy is fantastic. Uh, might be my favorite Chris Hemsworth. Uh, really? Like his his portrayal of of Dementus is superb. Um, he's really good. He almost steals the show. Honestly, 
Uh, he's he's that good in this movie. Chris Hemsworth really, if he's he, he, he likes the role, he will really throw himself. Yeah, into Yeah, and it. I, you get the impression that everyone really had fun making this movie. Um, I think what what does help because obviously you've got Anya Taylor Joy in, in place of Charlize Theron. Um, I'm not sure who plays a Morton Joe, but obviously the original actor uh, passed Zachary away. Paul? Yeah. Um. So a, a lot of recast or a couple of recast but what does really help is you do have like nathan jones back and a, a couple of a couple of the yeah. people from the from fury road are in this movie in the same role so it does very much feel yeah. like it's it's you've got angus uh simpson as the organic mechanic as well yes I mean. yeah yeah so you do kind of feel like oh okay it is actually a prequel to this film um it, it kind of works a little more it feels, you know, because again, George Miller has previously said, well, you know, it's all myth and it's not really connected. These yeah. two movies definitely feel like they're definitely connected. Uh, this film kind of ends immediately starting into the next, into Fury Road. So it, it definitely connects. Uh, is, is there a, a sort of, because I know a lot of people have said, you know, I don't need to know Furiosa's background. Is, does it feel superfluous or does it feel like it? it's it's warranted? Um, yeah, I don't. I don't know that it was needed uh, a, a prequel to, to to Furiosa, but I I really enjoyed her character's journey. I thought it was a really interesting story. Um, you know, it, it, again, it's not like oh, we di- we didn't need this to happen. Yeah, but it is a really fun story. It's a really, uh, it, it's really well told. It's really well acted. Um, I enjoyed the events of the movie. Um, it's got one of my um favorite actors at the moment as well and it's got tom burke in it who's praetorian jack yes yes and what i gather is the sort of max standing kind of yeah kind of um there is a really awkward mad max cameo in this movie um well not it awkward is, it, it kind of works but it you know it's it's, it's, it's it, it by, was um, pointless it didn't need to happen from what i gather he's played by uh tom uh Oh fuck! What's his name? Uh, it's Tom Hardy stuntman. Hardy, isn't it? oh yes, yeah, Tom Hardy stuntman. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jacob Tomery, right? Um, but yeah, uh, I, so I so... kind of presumed when that that he would be like a background character, or we'd walk past or something. Yeah. So so Praetorian Jack is kind of a max stand-in for for some of the movie. Um, yeah. He he basically is the original war rig uh, driver commander oh, okay. okay um and uh he kind of discovers that furiosa is a woman i think it, it in the movie because she kind of hides and after being captured she she hides and uh okay. pretends to be a boy for quite a while um before being discovered by by praetorian jack and they they kind of make a a a, a friendship they form a friendship and a, a bond um right. But yeah, I I really enjoyed this movie. I thought the the action was superb, uh, really well directed. Um, fits right in with Fury Road. I wouldn't put it on the same level as Fury Road, but it, it's really good. It, it's it really is up there, and I really really enjoyed it. Um, has some weird bits. I it kind of felt like it almost wanted to have another movie. It felt like it might have been in two parts. Really, um, you do get a kind of awkward moment towards the end of the movie where um they say uh i can't can't remember the exact the exact words but it's it's something along the lines of um you know and 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 these events led into the 40 year uh wasteland war anyway moving on um (laughs) and it's just like literally like a five second montage you're like that was the 40 day war that's over now now we move on um and it does kind of end quite suddenly. Uh, although I didn't dislike the ending. I thought the ending was, was superb. Uh, she certainly... The the end of the movie very much mirrors Mad Max. You know? Like, okay. she is she's riding out into the wasteland in her car on a quest for vengeance, uh, this time against Dementus. But it very much has that that Mad Max anger to it, you know? yeah um yeah i really enjoyed this movie honestly i i i kind of wish i'd seen it in the cinema now that that's yeah. where i'm at and I, I, I wasn't sure because like you this the cg was the thing that concerned me mm-hmm. um but honestly it, it's really really good it's well done 
um you can tell it's more cg than than fury road but it's still a tremendous film uh george miller is a wonderful visual director and yeah, um he, he knows how to frame a uh, he a, really a, does a, a fight basically and like yeah. i said so, i mean so much of this movie is just happening in the desert mm. you know which could have looked really flat and dull honestly yeah. but you know he has a way he absolutely has a way um yeah, I, I thought this film was tremendous, and and I thought you know Chris Hemsworth probably the standout of the of the film. Annie Taylor Joy fantastic in in the lead role. Um, sure. It's a real shame this film hasn't done as well as it could have. That's the problem um, is that I think I can't people... I can't criticize it. I didn't see it in the cinema either. I just wish no, I did now. I um, think the th- the problem is is that some people have said that because of the failure of this, it's probably unlikely that we're going to get another. I think this is probably the end of it. anytime soon. Yeah, I think this is probably the end of it. Which is a bit sad. I, you know, I would have rather have seen another Mad Max movie than. Yeah, this. but honestly, this was a really good film. Um, you know, like as much as it's great to see a Mad Max movie, this this was a really good movie. Mm. So yeah, I uh, highly recommend it. Anyway, because I love Annie Taylor Joy and, and and I love. I I know, think you'll like the movie. It works well as a Mad Max movie, considering it doesn't have Mad Max in it. <laughs> It feels yeah. like a Mad Max movie, you know. Um, and Furious is a great character. Um, mm. I would say, in many ways, this film definitely adds some dimensions to Furious that wasn't present during Fury Road. Well, that's good. I mean, because yeah. that's kind of why you why you would want to see her. You certainly see why and how she gets shaped into the person she is, and not just like the loss of her arm, which is kind of an obvious thing that you're waiting to happen the whole movie, but. Like not just that, but just just everything about her character and how she came to be is is quite an interesting story. So yeah, I I really like this. I really really like this movie. It it's one of the best I've seen this year. Um, okay, it's up there. Yeah, sorry, so, I just noticed that one of the, one of the characters is called Smeg. Yeah, there's Scrotus <laughs> Smeg. There, um. there, there's a lot of great <laughs> character names, uh, as you would expect from uh, yeah, from yeah, George yeah. Miller and uh, Mad Max. They've they've had some wonderful names over the years. I think we were <laughs> so talking we about it start, when we. I, I think that's just Australian names, isn't it? <laughs> there is also, I I don't know if this I I'm guessing this was a reference, but there there is also a uh, a bike in this movie that to me very much looked like it had the the top half of the mannequin that gets shot in Mad oh, Max. Oh, really? Yes. The the Kundalini's yeah. mannequin woman is like got <laughs> half... <his> girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, she's like tied to the front of this bike, like half or top half, uh, which I, I don't know if that, that felt like an obvious reference to me. I could be wrong, though. It could be a completely different mannequin that I was just seeing that, things in, cool. but it, it looked like it to me. Um, yeah, there's some nice references. But yeah, honestly, I think this is a great movie. It's really, really well directed, really well acted, and great. If you want an action film, yeah, you can't go wrong with this. So, what else have you watched? Uh, so, I also watched Sleeping Dogs. Sleeping Dogs, yes. I, I was going to watch this, but I ended up watching Furious instead. So, this is a Amazon movie? Yeah. Um, starring uh, Russell Crowe, Karen Gillan, and I, I'm going to butcher his name because I never quite know how to pronounce it. <laughs> Martin Sokus. Okay. Uh, he usually plays bad guys he's got like he, he was the main bad guy in um the first equalizer oh okay yeah um so uh uh russell crowe plays um roy freeman who is a ex-detective yeah who basically was fired because he got a dui and was in an accident um but now he is uh, he's got Alzheimer's, and he's undergoing a radical new procedure. So they've basically cut holes into his head, and they've zapped his brain with lasers. I mean, they don't say lasers, but they've zapped his brain with some sort of <laughs> light or something, or, or something. They've they're, they're doing shock therapy. <laughs> yeah, they're doing a, a new sort of thing that that might help him. Okay. However, the problem it's is it's not a lobotomy. It's a future yeah, lobotomy it's fine it's um the well whatever it is it means that he's now 
doesn't remember pretty much anything about his life. So when you when you first see him, he's waking okay. up in his, his apartment, and I, I can cure your Alzheimer's by deleting your entire memory. Yeah, well, the 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 the, the process should be that he slowly regains. Oh, okay, right, right. Yeah, it's it's not supposed to wipe everything out. It's supposed sure. to. You so know, it goes away, but it should the brain should like reboot yeah. and and think. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, he's told you know don't drink alcohol because you know he was an al- he's an alcoholic, and they they think that alcohol can contribute can be a trigger for Alzheimer's. Okay, and he's basically told do everything you can, like do puzzles, you know, solve things, anything that will help your brain think and and, and help with them with your memory. Right. So when you when you first see him, there's a there's a great shot of him in, in sort of asleep in this chair, and he's got like dribbled down his face. It's like, yep, that's that's a realistic portrayal of a, a dude that's just fallen asleep in his chair. Yeah. <clears throat> and he wakes up, and everywhere in this apartment are bits of tape with writing on. So it's like this is the bathroom, that way's the kitchen, this is the this is that. You and behind him, it's like you are this person. This, you know, you, this, 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 you've had, you know, brain injury, blah, 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 blah. Uh, you know, all that sort of stuff. Go to the, he's, goes to the, uh, the, the kitchen. Uh, Fridge has got, um, your dinners are in here. The microwave is over there. Um, and this, he basically opens the, the freezer and it's just full of hungry man dinners. <laughs> and he, he sort of opens one up, goes to, the, goes to the microwave. He opens the microwave and in the microwave is the TV controller melted. Right. So he's, so he's clearly had some some problems. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So he gets this phone call from uh, a woman who is working for I've got I know what uh, Clean Hands I think the the organisation is. She's working for Clean Hands, and she says, uh, "I'd like to speak to you about um, one of your cases." And he's like, "Well, I." You can see him sort of slightly panicking because at first he doesn't want to answer the phone, but one of his sign one of his sort of sign says like answer the phone and talk to people sort of thing yeah so he's sort of sat there and he's sort of trying to remember things on obviously that it's not working but she says so uh, there was a murder of this uh, professor and you uh, you solved the case uh, and this guy is on death row and basically in like a week's time he's gonna he's going to the chair he's, he's or in lethal injection, I think it might be lethal injection. Either way, he's going to die. They're going to kill him in the next sort of week. He is requested to speak to you and the other uh, detective who dealt with his case. Uh, and he's like, okay, fine. Yeah, I'll go see him. So the other cop has not returned her calls. He doesn't want to know. Um, and the other cop is a uh, uh, Jimmy Rimmis, played by Tommy Flanagan, who is who's in like Sons of Anarchy and you know Braveheart, the guy with the, with the scars. Mm. He's fucking. I like him. He's tremendous. Yeah, guy. he's great. So he basically goes to the to see this guy, and this guy tells him that. Um, well, he looks through all of his files first. He's got all his all of his old case files in it, in his in his thing. And he, he, so he's sort of reacquainted himself with this case, and they got a confession out of this guy. The guy. Said he did it, no problem, done. There was, you know, the, his foot finger, sorry, footprints. His fingerprints were found on in the crime scene. So there you go. So he goes to this guy, and this guy says, you know, I wanted to, to tell you that, you know, I wanted to see how you feel about putting away an innocent man because I didn't do it. He said, yeah, I was there. Um, I was strung out. I, you know, I would have said anything at that point. So. You know, I didn't do it. I've been here for ten years, in, in you know, in a terrible place um, as an innocent man. Rah, rah, rah. So Freeman now is like, well, I I don't know, you know, yeah, whether it's true or not. So mm-hmm. he has to sort of try. So he decides he's going to sort of re sort of walk the case. Yeah, sure. So he he's been to he's his... been told to solve puzzles by his doctor. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So he goes to see his. Um, partner is partner sort of like says oh no, i haven't seen you for ages blah, blah blah and you know all that sort of stuff and he's like well that case is over we don't need to talk about it i'm not interested 
It's like they got you. It's like, but he still wants to sort of sort of this thing. There's still things like you know, he feels that this is this that something's not quite right. So he go, he goes to sort of look into this, and it turns out that you know that the the guy who was killed um, was um, this professor uh, played by uh, Martin Cust- uh, Sockers. And he had this, um, he was working on a contract for the government, and this was also to do with memory. Now, he was working on a drug that um, targeted um, traumatic events so that they could take away, almost entirely erase traumatic events so that people can you know, get over it, like veterans and things like that. So, mixed up in all this, there's also Karen Gillan's character, who was Laura Barnes, who seemed to be his assistant, and another guy um, called Richard Finn, who was her boyfriend, and he seemed to have had a job working for him, the, the, this professor, uh, cataloging his books. Right. And when he goes to sort of see, to find this Finn guy, he turns up dead. Um. It looks like he's uh, had an overdose, but when he talks to all the people, they will say um, he never took he never took drugs. He was a weird guy, but he never took drugs. You know, he's even in, like at the, they go to the funeral and he talks to his brother, and his brother's like, "Yeah, I didn't like him, but he was he never did drugs. He, he, that's not him." Um, and he says, "There's he's got this script, this um, this uh, manuscript for this book that he was writing," and he says, "It's weird. I don't like. It. I didn't like it." Basically, it just seems like he was obsessed with this woman. So he gives it to Crow. Crow reads this manuscript, and it tells of how he met Karen Gillan's character and how she was this sort of girl, like almost perfect girl who speaks five languages and she knows all this right. stuff about everything from art to, you know, the sciences. And she at parties, she's you know, wowing everybody, wowing everybody with her knowledge and, and all that sort of stuff. And they have this relationship. And it does seem sort of very weird. And when it gets to the sort of end, it sort of finishes in a way that, you know, it's like, where's the fucking rest? What, what, what? You're supposed to be telling me this. So I'm not going to spoil this movie. But what I w- but well, from there, it does go on to be a sort of, you know, what's the truth? How much is, um, you know, involved with this other, this drug and um, memory loss? And his own memory loss, and how much of the case was um, covered up, or how much was not true, or all right. you know, all those sort of questions that you get. So, I will say, it's it kind you know, it wants to be a sort of um, you know, the obvious one would be um, uh, the memento, you know. Yeah, it's it's. It's not memento good. I'll, 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 I'll say that. Sure. Um, but what it is is Russell Crowe really putting in a, a really good performance as this, you know, mind-addled detective who's trying to re, not only rebuild his own life, but try and possibly save someone from being killed that is innocent, or maybe not. Yeah. You, you know. It could be that he's they got the right guy in the first place anyway. I mean, it's obvious, obvious spoiler. It you wouldn't have a movie if that was the case. But, you know, so and, and how the relationships come and all that sort of stuff. I really enjoyed this. <clears throat> it's again, it's it's not the best example of this sort of memory. You know, um, what do they call it? Uh, um, unreliable narrator it's it's, yes, it's, yeah. it's that, that that you know guy who who is, is is trying to do something that he really probably shouldn't be because he doesn't know what, what's going on yeah but that's obviously the joy of the movie it's the it's the you know finding out as he finds out and i think there's a certain amount that you will guess there, there are certain things that it's like okay you, you can see this coming you can see that coming but i think it's done well enough that you, you even when you do guess, you won't mind so much because I think it's 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 quite good. Mm. Um, most of the performances are really good. Um, Karen Gillan's accent is a little off. Um, there, 
but then that is also part of her character um, because there are certain things about her character that you find out that are, you know are, uh, not, not I guess dodgy or sort of thing. So she 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 is clearly putting on an accent at sometimes. Yeah, but it's, it does feel a little weird. I, I I'm not sure she's got the best American accent anyway. Mm. Um, but I really enjoyed this. I think it's it's an it's a nice little um, sort of murder mystery, if you like, um, with a with a, a sort of unreliable narrator that works really well. I I I, I, I think we said before we started the show that I, I like this current Russell Crowe. This he, he really of... seems to be putting a lot of effort into his into his acting and performances recently. Yeah. I've noticed it's, anyway. It's got this sort of you know slightly haggard slightly overweight yeah. sort of and he he seems very comfortable with himself in this as this i guy. really liked him in you know? um land of bad as well i thought he was he's great in land of bad in that um, movie. I and liked, he, I, he, he feels like he's one of those rare actors that and like a lot of those actors that have tried to keep themselves as they are you know they've tried to He's you know, he's very comfortably fallen into into this this phase of his life and acting. Yeah, it's I think. like fuck yeah. it, no, this is who I am. I don't give a fuck. Mm. You know, I'm not I'm not about to, you know, go to the gym every day to try and sculpt my body and and be. He, you know, he doesn't he doesn't care about. He clearly doesn't care about the you know the the whole star power, you know. Um, uh, it's no, all about well, like, I guess he's he's a talented well, enough actor. He doesn't need exactly, to rely on that, really. Um, I think that's it. I think it's a case of, well, I can fucking do this anyway. It doesn't matter that that I look like that. I just play good characters that yeah. so happen to be like that. And and, I, and, he's, and he's, he, he's settled into it really well. And he's and I think this is a really good, another one of his really good performances. I, I, I really enjoyed this movie. This, as I said, it's not, it's not the, the, the best of these types of movies, but I think you will really enjoy it. Yeah. Um, it, 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 it looked interesting. I was going to give it a go. I, I watched uh, that fucking trash uh, trigger warning instead. <laughs> um, not that I had a bad time watching it, but you know, I, I probably should have watched this. This um, is way better than that. Let's, let's, you know. But yeah, I, I think Crow's been on a, on a roll. I, I'm really looking forward to, to seeing him in Nuremberg. I think that's going to be an interesting performance. Um, so yeah, I guess we'll we'll see. But um, yeah, I, I've really liked the 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 performances Crow's been putting in for a while. I quite liked that Unhinged. Was it the 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 Road Rage movie? I thought yeah. it was great in that. I, again, the movie gets a bit silly, but and you like the Pope's Exorcist as well, didn't you? Uh, yeah, it's it's not a horror movie, but it was an okay action movie. You know, I remember you saying you liked him in it though. Yeah, he's great in it. Yeah, yeah, again, great performance. Um, and like I said, I'm, I'm curious about him in Nuremberg. Oh, that could be a really interesting role for him. Um, so yeah, we shall see. But uh, yeah, I, I, I will probably check Sleeping Dogs out. It, it does look interesting. Yeah. Well, I think that's that's it for all of the movies, isn't it? That is, yeah. Is there anything you wanted to talk about? We we did watch that awful um, Hellboy trailer before uh, the show uh, started. I mean, I think I didn't think it was as bad as you did, mm. but i was i was a little okay i didn't even know this was this existed i've not heard anything about this at all no and and you know it certainly looks low budget um we'll we'll see i thought that you know just the 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 dialogue and the tone of the trailer and you know they're clearly trying to go for a horror thing which is cool but uh it it looked pretty bad that's not to say that the film will be though you never know great i mean like you said does it did look very low budget and I thought it was a fan movie. I legitimately I he, he thought he looked it was a fan okay. Movie. I thought he. I've seen certainly seen seen worse. Yeah, it, it, you know, people dressed as kids, help boy. Um, I mean, to be honest, as long as it's half better than that last one, yeah, that, that, that would be that, something. That last one was awful. Yeah, it was bad. Um, and I adore the uh, Del Toro. Um, yeah. Hellboys, I think they're great. I think movies. most people do. The second right? one in particular, I think, is fantastic. Mm. The, the the Golden Army is is wonderful. I mean, 
it, it still slightly boggles me that um is it Luke Goss? Is is yeah. like he played some great bad guys. I think his best roles have both been with um El Toro with director. I don't know whether that says something. But yeah. you know, he's wonderful in that, in that and he was wonderful in um the second Blake movie as well. It's obviously got a thing about seconds. Yeah. <laughs> It still, yeah, it still boggles me that the guy from Bros turns out to be a pretty good actor, actually. <laughs> yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty good. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, so uh, you know, it's a shame that, they, that we never got. The, I think it's a shame that we never got the third movie. A third movie from. No, um, I, I, I completely like, agree. Um, like you said, you didn't really need it. No, I think two left it in a in a place where, like you said, there there were questions and there was definitely somewhere to go with the third, but it didn't feel like it wasn't a massive cliffhanger to where. Oh no. God! How will we ever live without a third Hellboy movie? Like yeah. it was like, well, you had two really I'd like good to movies. I'd like to see what happens with the kids. Yeah, I'd like you know, because you get you do get the, the sort of the whole prophecy about him bringing the end of the world and, and all that sort of stuff. And it would have been nice to have seen a bit of that, yeah. but yeah, you know, it was not meant to be. And I think no, I think Perlman's probably way too old to be carrying all that. I I think he said himself, didn't he? The, didn't he say? shortly before the last hellboy movie came out that it was like it was now or never and, yeah and i think he's like kind of like well time's passed now and that's it you know still, he still would love to do it i think but i think he would he, i mean you might be able to cgi more of it so that you could get away with it but yeah no I, I mean to be honest they could probably do an animated movie yeah and uh, to finish it off yeah that would be cool yeah but yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not sure what to make of of the uh, Hellboy, the Crooked Man, but I, I'm, I'd probably give it a go. I'll give it. Uh, I don't know, actually. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe I'll give it a go. I'll um, give it a so... go if it turns up on a streaming site. I'll give it a go. I'm not paying money for it. No, that's, that's where I'm at right now. Unless a trailer comes out, you know, nearer the time, and it's it's really good. Um, but yes, I was not impressed. Uh, is there anything else you wanted to to cover? Yeah. So we got, um, uh, so Josh Gad basically dropped that uh, he will be working on Space Balls Two. Oh my God! Yeah, with uh, with Mel, Mel Brooks and. Uh, well, I don't know whether it's. They've got a know, lot of new material. I mean, I'll give them that. I mean, that's the, that's the thing. Is is are they going to go there though? Well, I don't know. But I mean, because let's yeah, like you said, I mean, Star Wars these days is a complete fucking disaster. They could make some fantastic. They could. They could. Yeah. How awful Star Wars is now. Yeah. Um, Well, that feels like. Well, why else are you doing it otherwise? That exactly. I think that. You know, I guess there is enough material. Should they have the balls to do it? I mean, I don't know whether they do. No. I I haven't seen the. So they did a, a history of the world series, didn't they? Yes. And I don't know whether that was any good. I haven't seen it. To be honest, I was a bit, ooh, I'm not sure. Yeah. And I, I didn't hear great things, so I thought, oh, maybe I'll just give it a miss. So I don't know whether whether Brooks has this, you know, the same bite he used to before. Yeah. Is it going to so, be Mel Brooks again? Well, he's, he's going to be working on it. Whether okay. he, I don't know how much. Yeah, they haven't said whether people are going to return. Um, I mean, you'd hope at least yeah. some would return. At least, at least Dark Helmet and I mean, I don't know what. I mean, he he doesn't do much. He doesn't days. do much. He's he's, he's appeared uh, in a few things recently, but not much, is it? It's just all appearances. Um, Pullman, I imagine, would be fine. Yeah. To turn. And, that, and obviously John Candy can, because no, you know he's been dead for a while. Um, I guess that's all you'd really want to turn up, though, isn't it? They're just the sort of the, the Lone Star and the Princess and Dark Helmet would probably be the only ones. Yeah, that yeah, you'd want to see. That. Everybody else is either dead or superfluous. Yeah, I'm sure, I, I don't know. I'm sure, yogurt will turn up again. You would imagine, and Pizza the Hut will probably turn up in some form or fashion. Pizza the Hut. Yeah, I don't know. It 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 
it does feel like an odd choice um mm. but if they're going to do it like i said there, there is plenty of material in modern day star wars to make fun of for a a parody if they so choose mm-hmm. um and if they're not going to do if they're not going to be the parody of disney star wars what is the point yeah that that's you know you were a parody of the original star wars if you're going to do a modern day one it has to be a parody of modern day star wars yeah um otherwise you're just going to make a comedy star wars movie that's going to be clearly better than all the star wars stuff that's out so you yeah. know it has to be a parody of, of modern star wars i think um but yeah we'll see i guess it's an odd choice though mm. so uh finally um donald sutherland yeah uh, 88 mm. uh, absolutely tremendous actor oh good lord i mean some of my uh my my favorite films you know mm-hmm. uh just just amazing i mean we were we were saying obviously you know some some, some incredible war movies as he yeah. as he came up but then obviously from my perspective you know things like don't look now and and the remake of or remake or possible sequel of invasion of the body snatchers yeah um you know there's so so many iconic roles uh that he had um, yeah and and, like, and even into later life movies, i mean he never really stopped loved Billy's heroes and i love oddball oddball is one of my favorite characters even though the whole idea of a bunch of hippies in 1940s doesn't really make that much sense yeah um, it's fine <laughs> and yeah he was such a tremendous actor and i i he's another one of those actors that that sort of went through these stages as well because by the time you get to sort of the late 90s and early 2000s and stuff he becomes the, a, a very good villain actor oh yeah you know he's, he was he, he was in a lot of uh very bad men uh sort of things and, and the, i do i find it slightly hilarious that a lot of the, the tributes are were um oh christ hunger uh, games yes hunger Games. Hunger Games actor dies. It's like, are you fucking serious? That's, Man, that's the, so that, insulting. That's the movie you choose to. to, to I understand it. that that's probably the one that that younger people know. Yeah. But the Hunger Games did not star Donald Sutherland. No, I mean like, he was, he was great in it. in it as in a supporting role. But if you're oh, going to say star of. Then it, it it's star of don't look yeah. now. It's it's star of invasion and, and, of the body. I will say there were ones that there were also ones that did say don't look now star and okay and, 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 and clue star and stuff like that. But there was a lot that did say that, and it was like oh oh no yeah. <laughs> but yeah, what, not that he was bad in those movies. He was fine, and you know no, he's great. I I, I have a, a very big soft spot for those movies. Yeah. They, 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 there were movies that that surprised me. Because I thought they were going to be awful, and I don't think they are. I I, I really enjoy them. The the, the the third one is a bit ropey, but you know I I I've got a lot of love for those movies, and he's he is great as, as the president as president so. Um, but yeah, I mean, wonderful movies that you know, uh, Eagle has landed. I was and, just and, thinking the Eagle has landed was a great movie. Yeah, he's great as this sort of Irish traitor. In, yeah, in, 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 in that, and and you've got. Um, JFK, he was great. He was, you know, really good in that. Yeah. And there's a he's he's lovely as the dad in Pride and Prejudice. Have you seen his the version of no, Pride and Prejudice? No, I haven't. No. With um uh oh, what's her name? Um oh god, um that's really annoying. Um oh, my brain is completely mished. But he's great as the is the is the sort of the, the 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 lovely sweet father in in that who who uh you know is sort of put upon by his, by his um, overbearing wife and, and he's got a lovely sweet little bit at the end of, of the movie uh and he's wonderful he, he he's another one of those actors that whatever he was in you knew he was going to be in, in a great performance yes absolutely yeah, I, there was there was never anything that seemed beneath him you know he, he, if you wanted him to do things i mean he he was he was the original watcher in the original buffy and he was yes 
he was he was he was great in that. It's the sort of yeah. it's the it's the sort of pre- it's the first watcher that we that we ever saw. And I, I that movie is very different from the series, but it, I still love. I've got a lot of love for the original. Yeah, uh, Buffy. And I mean, Paul Rubens is fantastic in that. You know, and Rodrigo Howard as well. But yeah, he was he was great in that too. So yeah, I mean, I'm, he he was again acting right up to the to the end, like a lot of the. A lot of that generation. Yeah. Yeah. I even reviewed one of his last movies, that, um, oh, what was it, Mr. Something's Phone, where it was the sort of horror movie where he... Yeah. Yeah, the sort of him and who was uh, speaking to this the kid and sort of, you know, educating him and all that sort of stuff. And there's a sort of weird sort of ghosty type thing that, that happens with the sort of, say, ghost zombie type-ish thing, if, I guess, at, you know... Uh, sort of revengey type thing. Yeah, he was great as that. And, you know, he looked quite frail in that movie. Mm. And I think he'd been ill for a while. Um, I don't, know. I don't know, even he... know. What what did he die of, ultimately? It, it, just, it said along it after a long illness. Oh, okay. so I don't Fair enough. know what he specifically died of. Died of. Mm. But yeah, so tre- tremendous act, uh, actor. Um, will be sorely missed. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I think we will choose one of his movies for next week. Do you want to pick now or do you want to, you uh, know? I think pro- it's probably down to two. I feel like I could guess which two. But... So I would say Don't Look Now um, or uh, Bodies and Actress. Yeah. E- either or is fantastic by me. Um, yeah. I'm I... happy with either. Which one would you like? Oh, I don't mind. I think you probably were leaning more to Body Snatchers, weren't you? I, I was purely because I, I love... Well, I mean, I love his performance in Don't Look Now, though, you know? Um, yeah, let, let's go with Body Snatchers. Why not? Okay. Uh, it, it's a fantastic example of a remake. Uh, we've we've done a couple of good remakes before. Um, yeah. But this is one of the, it's one of the best, and his performance is superb. Um, one of my, my favourite comedic scenes in a horror movie um is is him with the caper the scene in the wonderful. restaurant is superb um so yeah let, let's do that let's just do uh invasion of the body snatchers uh tremendous we will be back next week with uh with invasion of the body snatchers uh the the 70s remake and uh until then stay safe take care and we will catch you next time